Hey, what's good, self-direct investors? I hope you're all doing great, and I want to welcome you back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Jordan, and I'm the mind behind Make More Capital, and today we're going to cover what cannabis investors have been patiently waiting for for a very long time, the results of the Georgia Senate runoff to decide what happens to the Senate. Now, before we jump in, if you enjoy this video at any point or you learn something, all I ask is that you leave a thumbs up on the video as it really helps out my channel, and I would really appreciate it. And then, of course, if you want to learn how to take advantage of this industry and invest in companies that will start in these states that literally create an industry out of nothing over the next few years, then definitely subscribe so you don't miss any new videos. And then you can go back and watch Reality Check Cannabis in 2020, which is the series I made, and then watch episodes of This Week in Cannabis leading up to now just to get caught up to speed. But, uh, you know, the results, one election has been determined already, and the other one is very close, and I'm really w willing to call it because it seems as if it's been determined. But so the first election, Raphael Warnock has beaten Kelly Loeffler by a percentage of 50.6 to 48.9 and a spread of about over 50,000 votes, which is huge. And in the second race, the thing is 98% of votes have been recorded. And John Ossoff, the Democratic candidate, is up by 50.2%, and David Perdue is down by 49.8%. Now, why do I feel confident that I can call it when there's such a small spread? Well, it appears that the New York Times have been providing some different updates, and uh, Gabrielle Sterling, a top Georgia's, Georgia election official, said that the majority of ballots still to be counted are expected to come from traditionally Democratic areas of the state. So that's something to really, um, you know, appreciate. That That is optimistic for the Democrats. And then, of course, the estimated remaining votes are mostly mail-in ballots, which Ossoff has been comfortably outpacing Purdue in these. So by that stretch, I'm just going to come out and say that this is going to happen. You know, I've been I've just believed that this will happen since August, and the fact that it's come true is mind-blowing. If you want to go back and watch my series, Reality Check Cannabis in 2020, like that is really what sparked this whole thing and my reason to decide to cover this. And I'm just so glad I did because it happened. So if ever you have that strong feeling in your gut, I just encourage you to, to pursue what it is that you're, you're passionate about and follow that because you can just be proven right. And just again, this is what America needs right now for jobs, tax revenue as a, as a medicinal alternative to opioids in states where people don't have access, plus social justice. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, Illinois expunging 500,000 arrest records, that's 500,000 citizens that get their life back and don't have this, this identity about themselves as a criminal hanging over. So that's why this is so important over the long run. Um, and if, I mean, the second vote still has not been decided, but I'm optimistic and I, I really think that it is going to go to Ossoff and we will see. Uh, I mean, the, as we've seen, the markets are, are certainly reacting to it today, but it's just the beginning, folks. So, oh, best day ever. What a way to start 2021. Now, if we look at Illinois numbers, they have updated their 2020 adult use sales figures and they ended December strong, up over $10 million from November sales, hitting $86 million. Uh, bringing in the total year sales to $669 million. Now that's great. And again, when you consider the in-state sales versus the out-of-state, this is people, you know, this is vacationers, travelers, tourists, but also people coming in from states where they can't access it themselves. And that's a lot of money. This could be going to other states, but Illinois gets it because they're willing to lead first and, and legalize before states around Illinois would. So just to show you, though, the percentage increase from their first sale to what they've done over, or so what they've done to end the year is a jump of 16,000 or 1,600%, sorry. So, like, nonetheless, it's just a big increase, but I want to show you this spreadsheet that I've made, and I know it's confusing, I apologize, but if we look at Colorado, their first year in 2014, and then we look at Illinois, their first year in 2020. Colorado has 5.7 million people, Illinois has 12.63 million. So, of course, there's a matter of how many dispensaries were opened in the state. That's, of course, the more dispensaries that are open or the more sales outlets, um, more access to legal cannabis points, more sales are going to come in. But look at this. Colorado brought in 683 million, and Illinois in their first year brought in 669 million. But the key thing is look what Colorado continued to do over the next few years. So this signals, and, and I actually did not complete, or maybe I did, yeah, how many times your money still compounds um, as, you know, 1 billion turns into 2 billion, turns into 3 billion. But this is what we can expect coming from Illinois going forward, which is why a very good play is to look for any companies, and I will again provide this spreadsheet in the description. I, I found this online. I don't know who made it. Thank you to whoever did. Um, but I am sharing this because it's, it's very useful information, especially for the average person to really change their situation. If you invest 
properly um, and intelligently, you can certainly take advantage of this. But what this this resource has down here is it tells you the amount that each one of these top US multi-state operators, the amount of dispensaries they have in each state. So for example, we know that Illinois has just started and they're about to, to really scale up these numbers and take off. So if you wanted to look through here, you could find any company that has dispensaries in Illinois. And as I mentioned in the last video, Cresco Labs and um, and Green Thumb Industries are the ones with the biggest footprints in Illinois. And so how this is also helpful is that we know that New Jersey and Arizona are legalizing in 2021. So if you look through here and find companies that have the most licenses and retail dispensaries in Arizona and in New Jersey, so I mean, New Jersey is Cureleaf, that screams... Uh, Screams like they'll have some success there. I Let me just make sure to check. Yeah, three or one. So never mind. They don't have as big of one, but I do believe that they're buying more space in there. Um, but example, you know, one that I really like is Harvest. Sorry, you know, I apologize. This can be confusing. But Harvest in Arizona has 18 licenses and 15 retail. And I do believe they got more licenses for uh, to take advantage of the recreational market uh, because this is all medicinal because that's only what's been legal in Arizona up until now. So folks, use this resource to take advantage. You know, do your own research. This is important. None of this is advice, but I'm giving you the, the tools. You just got to apply yourself and learn what to look for and you can certainly take advantage. And last good, well, last few great updates is that New York lawmakers did file an adult use cannabis legalization bill for the 2021 session. So, you know, after covering last week that they filed uh, some reform measures to their current medical cannabis uh, program, they have finally created the bill for uh, adult use legalization. And so there's 18 co-sponsors, uh, which is identical to the bill she sponsored last year. Now, this is the thing. They've been revising this bill since 2013. So imagine they just did it much sooner. They'd be one of the state, one of the leaders, like Colorado, like one of these other states that are way ahead in productivity. Um, but yeah, ultimately, it's it's the most compelling reason for doing so has always been to end the unnecessary and destructive impact of the so-called war on drugs on communities of color. And we've gotten to that point. So this is so nice to see that we're finally there. And again, with the impacts of the pandemic, the potential for legislation to create jobs, economic growth, tax revenue, that is the big winner here. So I do think that this will pass in 2021 because obviously the American people have spoken that they you know, by voting in the Dems that they want change and this signifies that. So you can definitely read through here to get more information on that. That's huge. Now, another state though, Missouri is actually pushing to legalize recreational as well. Um, now, one very unfortunate thing though, that like you watch this video and you get happy about it, but then it says, since, the cons since it's a constitutional amendment, recreational cannabis would not be legal if it is passed by lawmakers. Instead, it has to go to voters on the ballot in 2022. So, you know, unfortunately, you do have to wait until some point next year to actually vote on this in Missouri, which is really unfortunate. But what we do love to see is that Republican, um, that a Republican politician in Missouri is the one leading this charge. Because yes, it, it's bipartisan. It has nothing to do with what side you believe. It's just the fact that there are so many more benefits to, to ending prohibition than to keeping it the way it has been, which clearly has not worked. So, um, you know, no, no, no new information or excuses in here. It's simply just the fact that we spend more time and more law enforcement resources going after cannabis smokers than all other drugs combined. How terrible is that? And it automatically would let out people of prison, anyone serving time for cannabis only only offenses. It would expunge records of people with a criminal record. And again, that, that just has a huge impact as well. So it's all good things that are coming ultimately from the results of this election. So the last thing I wanted to reference is a new Cannabis Ventures article, nine potential cannabis sector growth drivers for 2021. Now, again, I'm not going to read through this whole thing, but I'll leave it in the description. You can check it out. But this is what we can look forward to. Access to capital should continue to expand, especially as the Safe Banking Act eventually gets passed sooner than later, as we would hope. New public companies are going to list. Uh, in 2020, we saw the most IPOs ever. So we can imagine a lot of other companies are going to try to take advantage of that, especially when more money is getting printed. Um, and at least big money is finally going to be allowed to invest in these companies because of the federal illegality they've not been able to. It's mostly institutional investors, sorry, it's mostly retail investors in these companies. So that's why if you can get in early, you're taking advantage. The pace of mergers and acquisitions will accelerate. Consolidation, so you know, two companies that one has a really good licenses, the other one has good product. They combine to create a bigger, more valuable entity. That is why we see mergers and acquisitions. More investors will embrace the sector. Yes, and again, this is big about the Safe Banking Act. And again, it's the size of investors that will start to embrace the sector. That's huge. Um, now, state legal cannabis should continue to gain share from the illicit market. Again, as more access points in states for people to buy legally, 
Eventually, that takes market share out of the black market, making them less powerful and just giving ultimately money back to the companies, providing this, you're supplying the demand, and then the states that have decided to, to legalize this because it's the right thing to do. Additional states could legalize, yes, I mean, you would hope so, and we have Maryland, New York, Pennsylvania, Rhode Island, Virginia, um, New Mexico, Wisconsin, all of these ones considering it, and just look at the progress, at, look for progress at the federal level. This is what we can finally see, um, you know, descheduling cannabis, removing it from the Schedule 1, which just ultimately changes everything, gives it back, gives the freedom of choice and use back to the people. So that is huge. Um, and we can expect to see with the Blue Senate uh, and Blue Control there that the Safe Banking Act and the Moore Act, which is literally sitting there in the Senate, and the Moore Act is Kamala Harris's baby, that will pass and likely, you know, again, just, just, change this for the better and uh, I'm just excited to see what comes of it and yes the Canadian market should continue to improve it most definitely will because Ontario has has announced that they're now going to open 80 stores and that will significantly increase the sales in Canada plus take money out of the black market where 64% of Canadians are still buying illegally versus the 30 six, I believe, that are buying legally now. Um, so that's also just, you know, the more we embrace this and learn as we go, the better results we're expecting. And focusing beyond North America will become more important. Yes, because the moment that the U.S. takes action and says, okay, you know what, this is no longer the way we view cannabis, the whole world is going to be like, oh, okay, yeah, this is, you know, we can change the way we view cannabis. And this started with the U.N. vote in December. Mexico is again legalizing in February. They've passed the bill. They just have to sign it. And uh, this just really opens up the world markets first for medicinal cannabis, which is for the better because, you know, it should be used as a medicine, medicine in the first place and treated so. And then eventually recreational can become a thing. And then that's where you get the extracts, the edibles, the vapes, all these different things. And that's why the consumer packaged goods industry is going to be shaken, I think, by, by cannabis quite soon and sooner than expected. And lastly, just to point out that Afria has announced that they will release their second uh, second quarter earnings on January 14th. We've been waiting for this. Um, but I, And again, I, I do think in Canada, though, Afria and Tilray, which if they combine to merge, they will be the biggest global um, player over time. But I, I do have to say is with these election results, it has certainly helped Canopy um, in, in Canada, because had this had the Senate not flipped, Canopy would be waiting much longer for U.S. for the U.S. to federally legalize, um, which would have put their deals with acreage um, and Terra Send at risk. But because of these results, again, it, it it raises all all of the cannabis companies, and uh, I think people are going to realize that there's a lot of opportunity here. And uh, better to try and take advantage sooner than later. So, folks, that was it for this week. Um, you know, great things, and we just have to wait for these results to be solidified. Uh, and you know, if and here, President-elect Biden, this just in four minutes ago, said in a statement that he believed Democrats would take control of the Senate and look forward to welcoming a new Majority Leader Schumer, who said, and I covered this in my last video, he will put it on the floor for the vote, and that change will come, folks. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and I hope you're as happy as I am. This is like Christmas for me. I've been waiting for this since August. And the fact that it, I, it panned out the way that I wanted it to and just the way that's better for humanity is like, oh, just gives you, puts, puts your faith back in the world and... You know, folks, we just got to come back together and, and make this change because it's individuals that drive change. It's not people that are negative. It's, it's, it's those that are willing to do the dirty work and bring everyone back together. So if you enjoyed this, I hope you leave a like on the video. Um, of course, all these resources will be below, in the, be below in the description so you can get them. And I recommend you subscribe so that you don't miss any new videos coming out, folks. Thank you for tuning in, and I will see you on Sunday. Have a great week.